Uh, this is a Biax scraper that I recently purchased and um, I've been taking it apart, cleaning it, uh, cleaning out the bearings and so on and I thought I'd just do a quick um, disassembly job so you can see how to take, it, take one apart. They, there, is, there are no instructions, you can't get any information uh, from Biax either in Switzerland where this is made or Germany where the main head office is or from America. It's absolutely hopeless trying to get any information at all. It um, looks as if it was made in 1972 judging by the nameplate on the machine itself. It says uh, 2272 stroke 72 and then 129 I think is the model number and this is a 110 volt one and um, as I say it's made in Switzerland um, the amount of stroke you can see has been from there to there just hold that up a little bit to the camera from there to there um, and has worn slightly on this side but not a lot so I'd probably leave it I think uh, if I was really pernickety I might take it apart and um, take these plates off and refinish them, regrind them and then put shims behind uh, sitting on top of this is uh, the uh, actual scraper itself uh, this is a replacement I think that somebody's made up at some stage it's missing the part that goes on the top here and the um, uh, carbide um, plate that actually does the cutting uh, but this is the the genuine article for going on to here and it, it's held on in that position there with two screws underneath um, this is hardened steel here um, and these screws were done up quite tightly I think would be best to replace them with uh, hex head sockets there's plenty of room inside the, the casting in here or the uh, machining in here there's quite a lot of depth in there to take a hex head so I think that's what I'll do um, they'll be 12.9 steel so that's not a problem um, now if I just disassemble this a step at a time the way to start taking this to pieces is to undo three nuts on the outside of the machine and that gets you into it, you can't take it apart any other way it's handy to have the correct spanner Before we get into the inside of it, it's worth just pointing out there's two holes in here which are for a Tommy bar to go through um, to help unscrew uh, the stroke making apparatus um, and there's also two holes in here, two quite big holes and they're to allow access to the stroke adjustment. So you can just see inside here nothing at all except a casting and one bushing and the two holes in there. This is the stroker that um, is moved in and out by the amount of angle that this piece has. So as this goes round it moves this stroke in and out and this is the nut that 
uh, sorry, the socket screw that alters the amount of stroke that there is and it uh, adjusts a cross piece that sits buried inside here. As I say, it it um, adjusts the amount of the angle, effectively, of that plate. Now, sitting on the inside of here is a, a ball race that's held in with a screwed plate, which you need a special tool for. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to take the whole of this assembly off and that then will allow me to take the rest of the mechanism apart. This is quite easy to undo. Um, I just selected an appropriate hole here um, and I've, I've eased this off so that it's uh, easy to come undone but that just unscrews off the end of the shaft. So the whole of that mechanism you can take apart if you want to. If you want to get into the depths of the machine first you can uh, look inside it here um, and there's a screwed um, retainer and underneath that is a ball race um, and there's a Belleville washer that presses against it and it's um, uh, the, the bearings I, I think probably best just simply to list at the beginning of the article um, so that if anybody wants to order them or whatever they can. So I'll take the two screws out of here next. Helps to have the right equipment. This comes apart at this joint here, so a light tapping is all that should be required. There's nothing else holding it. There we go. And this gear is the uh, one that causes the, the main problem with this machine. It's a, f a fiber uh, helical gear and is very prone to get damaged if it's uh, used a lot and the rest of the machine's not lubricated properly. Um, so if I just take this out, nothing much to see except underneath here are some screws and those screws take this plate off. I won't take it off now because there's no need to remove it. So assembly is just the reverse. Uh, sitting inside here is this helical gear, steel helical gear. So there's basically three ball races that uh, are in this machine. A double row one in here that's a floating one and two double row, there's a plain ball race and a double row ball race in here. Just put that in carefully. There we go.
all this back together. I shan't take this piece apart um, at this stage, but there are pictures of it later on disassembled. By the way, uh, all threads um, are right-handed. There appear to be no left-hand threads. And the only other remaining thing of any interest is the uh, brushes which are in here. Very easy to get at. And in my case, um, we're only about 75%, sorry, 25% used, 75% not used, I would say. It's difficult to estimate exactly. Um, and they sit at an angle here pushed on by the spring and it's a little difficult to see but there's a, a slot that they, the spring can act on and um, the condition of the commutator inside was quite good so I'm not going to disturb this and don't just simply use it as it is it works perfectly well, so no need to. Right, so the next thing I'll show you is uh, inside in more detail and all the parts stripped out. I finally got the uh, scraper fully disassembled and I've cleaned everything, got rid of all the old grease that accumulated um, around inside the, the uh, machine 
<clears throat> and um, I cleaned all the bearings and they all seem to be in good condition and I'm not going to have to replace anything rather to my surprise um, what I did do was I flushed everything out with paraffin um, and then with a syringe flushed out the bearings and you can see and hear that that's very free spinning this is a this particular one is a double row ball race um, and that's a single row one all very free running no no play no wear that's a double row one inside here uh, there's no sign of any grit or anything inside the bearings now um, I blew everything out with compressed air after after I cleaned everything and uh, the results have been excellent <clears throat> the one thing I would say is taking this apart was a little tricky in places it, it looks very simple because there's not much of it but I couldn't get hold of any kind of manual uh, from uh, from the makers um, from Bayax I contacted this one particular one was made in Switzerland and um, uh, they didn't return any of my emails I wrote to Germany Bayax in Germany they didn't return any emails I wrote to the US website and they didn't return any emails either so don't expect any help from Bayax if you've got one of these you need to follow what other people have done they've basically washed their hands I think of anything made in this sort of era um, as far as I can tell uh, this dates from 1972 because if you look on the label here just there it says 2272 and then 72 and then 129 I think the 72 is the year I may be wrong but I think that's what it is and this particular one is 110 volts uh, which is a little bit annoying because I then had to buy a transformer so that I could run it on 110 volts in the UK uh, in, in the UK it's used occasionally in factories where they like to keep the voltage down um, when taking the parts like this apart it's quite a good idea and good practice anyway to mark things so you can make sure you assemble them the same way round when you put it back together again so I scratch on a, um, alignment marks and um, part numbers with an X or a Y or something um, so yeah, if you look at these there's very very little wear just a bit of polish really on there um, so I'm quite happy that this has got plenty of use in it I've taken the brushes out and had a look at the brushes inside um, in the back end here inside the cover um, and the the brushes have probably got three quarters of um, the carbon st still not used now uh, there are one or two interesting things when you take this apart this particular bit comes from in there and in order to stop this shaft rotating when you tighten this tighten this up you you put a a, a pin through here and it took me a, a moment or two to find this again not very helpful not having a, a, a manual and then you'll find that there's a hole in here where that pin goes through so it locks the shaft while you tighten um, up this particular part into there Um, there are some screws which have got um, ordinary slots in um, I 
have, I haven't, haven't got any of the right size but I will use torque screws because they're much stronger fittings on the end. These are just simply ordinary rather small diameter uh, hex heads. Um, the fibre um, helical gear is in perfect condition there's a nowhere on it on that's visible there's a, a flat on the top so it's it's not even worn any of it away so that's good news from my point of view because making one of those would be a bit tricky although I might have a go at it so all the parts are there they've all been cleaned so now I have to think about putting it back together um, and then I'll paint it um, just one thing when you fit this back together there are several there are two places where there are screwed rings there's a screwed ring that goes in here and it needs a special tool to undo it and there's a screwed ring that goes in here with a Belleville washer underneath it um, and this particular one inside here was very very tightly fitted on I, I really struggled to get that off um, so I had to make there's no good trying to do it with punches or anything like that so I made a special tool which fits into the holes in the ring and then you put a, a tommy bar through but even with a hole that size it bent the tommy bar unless I found that I managed to find one with a toughened steel that was able to take force and these are toughened pins um, the one that's on this particular part of it this one this was pretty difficult to get off as well um, and I made a special tool up with the two pins to take the ring and you can see all this is probably a little bit fiddly to to get at but you have to there we are, it goes in there so but that all worked and that's uh, that's fine uh, when you take this pin out which holds this assembly together goes in here. When I first took it apart I thought it was just a matter of undoing the castellated nut on here and taking the cotter pin out uh, but when I took it out I, I, it didn't come out and it, I couldn't knock it out or anything and then I realised that it had a thread on it um, and then it was a simple matter of unscrewing it after that. So um, it actually screws through into here and these little blocks sit on these two pivots so that this can move. Right, I will now reassemble everything. I'll do it a step at a time and then uh, you can see a little bit more about how it all goes together. And this is inside the casing looking forward and you can see the push rod fits into there. That's just worth showing this. Um, that's a, indicative of the little amount of wear that there's been. Just you may just catch the sight of that. There's a very slight lip on there. It's so small. I think I'll probably leave it. I had thought originally about um, taking that off and um, cutting it back and then putting a shim under it but I don't think it needs it. Um, the, the only thing that really has to be dealt with is the belt which uh, you hold it with as a strap um, and um, I'm making up a new one and I'll show that later. So I'll start assembly and I'll do some more filming when that's done. I've now <coughs> greased and assembled the majority of it. Uh, this is the main part, the main bearing in the middle. 
<coughs> I've not got anywhere near as much grease on this as it had when I bought it. Um, I've perhaps I've just put a little bit more on this wheel here, but it doesn't doesn't really need it. This is just to make me feel a bit happier that it won't lose the fibre wheel. And inside here is a brass bush, and you can't see it now, but there's a, a, a filed um, a section that uh, allows the grease to escape back out again. So it's obviously intended to have grease in it. So if I put this back in, make sure I've got it the right way around, yes. So that's that, and it just has two nuts on the end. You can see that joint there is now closed up as I've tightened these up. I mean, only doing them by hand, just so that it's just <coughs> an adequate amount, but not too much. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to turn it on to make sure it's working properly. Let me switch it on. Moment of truth to see whether everything's working. Yep. So the next job is to I've assembled all this and this screws onto the thread here. One thing I've just discovered as I was putting this together just now is that the position of this screw uh, where it engages with the block underneath determines the amount of stroke and the way I got it set up at the beginning uh, was clearly giving it too much stroke so I've changed it now and I think that that's now correct so we'll put that back together and try it again and it shouldn't have quite as much as it had before that should have a lot less than it had before It's not a variable stroke machine, uh, but obviously you can set the amount of stroke that it's got. And, and it should be something that calibrates to where it was originally, and you can tell that by the amount of wear. So that should be fairly easy to determine. And expect it to be running from there, from there there. That 
that looks pretty close to where it should be. And this is the block that holds the holds the scraper tool. I shall change these screws that are in here. In fact, I don't think I'll put that on just yet. Not sure why it came with um, slot headed screws, they just burr over. I haven't got all of the tool here. I have to make up part of this. And that goes on there like that. As you can see it's just going down to that point there and up to this point here which is fine. That's where it should be. 